Wise guy. Right here at Dollarama. We're about to head inside the Dollarama and see what is available. I got to get pick up some supplies for painting. So I'm going to do a quick aisle walk and just use my eyes to scan everything. And we'll see what they have here. Cookbooks are always great, so make sure you guys check out the cookbook section. See what they have. Some weight loss books are always good. Taste of the Seasons, probably good. These books sell for like $30. 20 bucks US. Food Solutions. I'm in the home and kitchen section. What's going on? If you uh, are live with me, let me know where you're from. Hit me up in the chat. Ask me your questions. Haven't been on for a week, so I thought I'd jump on. I haven't been in a Dollarama for a while. So I figure why not just take a look and see what they got in here. Anything stands out. Last time I was in here, I noticed in the toilet aisle was pretty empty, so they might be preparing space to blast it with a bunch of toys. Back to school is coming up, so maybe they'll have some backpacks here or something like that. We'll take a look at those. got to go down the painting aisle. Painting one of my rooms. I hate painting, but I got to get some of the painting supplies, so we'll got to get a roller. Heavy duty paint roller frame. And I have to get, what else do I have to get? Some paint sheets. And a tray. I think this is a paint tray. <laughs> Got the one on it? Yes, it is. Get one of those. What the hell? And a foam thing. A paint roller. And drop cloths, colored drop cloths. I think we need two of those. One, two, paint roller. And then gloves. She said plastic gloves, so to look for those. All right, here's check out this. Hunter, Hunter's aprons. This is kind of cheap, but it is some sort of brand. Ooh, these would be Duramax, so it's Dollarama's brand, yeah. All right, let's scan everything. Let's see what they have. <clears throat>
So there's usually a few things I'll get in the container aisle. Uh, I love looking at things like Rubbermaids. The thing is you gotta look for products that don't have the Dollarama logo embedded on them because you you can't you obviously can't send in products with embedded price tags in them that say four dollars or three dollars or whatever the case may be so you have to find products that don't have an embedded or if it does have an embedded then and it is a good product and you know it'll sell and it matches the listing then what you can do and i've done it in the past is you can do a removal of the embedded price and maybe do a cover-up with a with a nice sticker or something like that uh, i've literally gone and bought like colored stickers that cover up but i may have uh used like an exacto knife to take out an embedded uh price tag and just covered it up with a sticker that blended perfectly um, sometimes actually enhance it or I'll actually just chop off the whole area and make sure that it's balanced but you obviously can't sell products that like these Canada hats maybe they do well but you can't sell products with an embedded Dollarama logo so there's ways around that if the product is really gonna be profitable but you also got to look at the logo here the, the tags to make sure that they don't have say Dollarama on them or something like that Right, so like this is embedded, so you may remove this whole thing and just send the actual hat, hat itself, you know. There may be something you would do in that nature if you're gonna sell, say, like a Canada hat like that. But dealing with embedded logos is, is pretty straightforward. Check out these. Like embedded stickers, I don't know how you would deal with that. You might take an X-Acto and chop it off right here just below the logo, straight across. You know, if this is say a product that can do it, but you also gotta look at the overall product and see if if this product has the word Dollarama written on here somewhere else, like right there it does. So you may need to remove this whole sticker and just send in the product with that sticker, but not the actual branding sticker. And then just cups and all that type of stuff. I don't really do cups. Ooh, look at these. A little pod set by Extreme Pods. The Canada logo on here. These are like skins. Some cool stuff there. The pet section is always good. There's always some toys that do well. Sometimes you can find some really good brand toys like Kong and you know, Wing It and all these other toys that tossers and stuff like that that are popular and sell well. Might not have the most profitability. You have to uh, luck out when it comes to profitability, but you might be able to make four or five bucks a toy, three, four, five bucks a toy and sell a decent amount. So if you filled yourself with a decent selection of pet toys, you could do well. So I always check out the pet section. Now down this section is the seasonal stuff. So we'll skip that. We'll skip the food aisle. And we'll check out the baby aisle. Diapers, wow. Actually, have diapers here. That's cool. Always good to check these. <clears throat> you can get them for three bucks. Sometimes they'll sell upwards 15 to 20, even more sometimes. So, soothers are a must. First year's good brand. Here you go. Pack and play fitted bed sheets by Graco. Ooh, haven't seen these before. Those might actually sell. I'd have to pause and back here. I won't gonna pause this video because I don't have my other phone to check the scan. That would be a good.
Pro I, I'm guessing that would be a good product. Fitted bed sheets, can't beat that. Already sealed and wrapped. Here's a good brand, Ryan's World. This is a three-in-one shampoo. So that might actually be a profitable product. Although the sticker's coming off here, so. But I'd check something like that. I haven't seen that, although it might not be. Look at, although this is crappy though. So you could actually fix that at home, but I probably wouldn't buy that. Like make sure that the product's not gonna fall apart before it gets to the customer's home. That's an ideal way to make sure you check all the products. Soaps, I love looking at lotions. So in, in the, in the uh, personal care section, check every lotion, especially unique brands. Like if it were a unique brand and it was a lotion, I'd be checking this. This is a hand wash, so no big deal. But I'd be looking at lotions. Unique brands of lotions, hand creams, like Glycomed hand cream, here you go. Glycomed hand creams, New Balance, dry skin. Aloe vera gel. Here we go. So we got Deep Cleanse. This is a conditioner, but it's a unique brand, Ren Pure. So that's unique. Usually just anything with a unique packaging to it that stands out. That's not your typical commercialized brands. And some obviously some popular commercialized big brands. Check all those. Those are always, you're always going to find some good buys and good opportunities. Now, this is the office section. It's back to school. So you definitely want to check the office section. Bubble wrap, you can get bubble wrap here for packaging. If you need bubble wrap for packaging, it's two bucks. Maybe you need a layer for above, for top of your stuff. You can get bubble wrap, the envelopes and stickers. You can get all that stuff here. Bic, four bucks. Quattro. I said this before, but check that. Zero kids. Yeah, I've always said before, make sure you check the kids' toothpaste and kids' mouthwashes because for whatever reason, I'm not too sure, but for whatever reason, they sell for high prices on Amazon, $15, $17 for a product that costs you like $2. I don't know why. Maybe, I, I think, my guess, my guess is that it's a brand that the parents love, their kids love. And you know, with most of the brands, like by Procter & Gamble, they come and go. They're moving on to the next brand, the newest formula or ingredients. But parents want the one that works. So sometimes you can discover a, an older brand that may be expiring in three, four months, maybe a little longer, six months. But the thing is, when you get it to Amazon, it sells out super fast. Ooh, a couple cool toys. When I looked at this one last time, there was no price. But Star Wars Porg and Porglets, these little creatures that are the feet, there are these. I haven't bought any to sell on Amazon, but I did buy one for my Star Wars collection. The time machine did not show up, but I did see those. Ooh, look at that. Cosmics, never heard of this character from a new TV series. 
So anytime you see anything with a new TV series or especially if it has Netflix or YouTube specific branding, it doesn't say if this is YouTube or Netflix, but it does say it's a new TV series. So I would definitely check this. This might go for 25 bucks, a little character like that. And there's a few different characters. There's a few different characters. So I'll definitely have to check that out. Looks like they filled up some of the space on the shelves here with some new toys, which is nice. And then we got the DIY, the do it yourself, my least favorite category, my least favorite uh, aisle. Years ago, when I first started, I found some birdhouses in the do it yourself section. I guess these are home decorations. I don't know if you've had experience with home decorations. Like to me, something like this would do really well as a private label product. You could probably get this for less than a buck and sell it for between 10 and 15. I don't know. It's just a guess. It's compact. If you've had experience with home decorations, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you had experience or good results with do-it-yourself stuff, let me know. Like I said, uh, years ago, I came across a birdhouse and was able to get my hands on maybe 30 units from a dollar rama for four bucks a unit and they were selling for like 25 to 30 and that's what really motivated me to look for that product and brand, bring it on and create my own listing as a private label so that's kind of created it was a start of hybrid oh wow, i need a football that is right Ooh, that's a lightweight football but it will do. But that's what started, yeah. Need a football for a practice later. It will do. But that's what started my my high, my journey into taking retail arbitrage brands and turning them into my own private label listings where I would be the only seller on the listing and I would create it from scratch and grow the listing. I didn't stick with birdhouses, but they still sell birdhouses here. Check this out. So they still sell a few, pretty cool, but this is their brand. So, I mean, Dollarama does as well. They'll take brands and oh, they'll, they'll, the brand will do extremely well and then they'll bring bring it back with their own, their own brand, their own private label crafts being the Dollarama brand. Comes with the paint, Dollarama brand on the bottom, different versions. But I had a ton of success with a do-it-yourself, um, do-it-yourself birdhouse. And ever since then, I've always tried to convert my better selling retail arbitrage products into private label products. But back to this aisle, the home decor and the do-it-yourself aisle paints and stuff like that. I've not personally ever had a lot of success in this aisle but I've been tempted in that aisle to do a lot of my own private label listings. Even with um, high quality paints, I was thinking years ago to launch high quality paints that we got here. But ultimately didn't do it. Ultimately, you know, when you create a master list of 50 products, you know, you only ultimately pick one or two that you're gonna launch. And that one made, I mean, I think, I swear it made the top five, but it never, I never ultimately m launched paint in that particular category. I think it was mainly because of the, the competition. I just didn't want to compete with a higher volume of competition when I first started. And to this day, I still love competing with no competition. I love four scores. I love products that come up on on Jungle Scout and they're a score of four. I love those products. They're under the radar. They have value, they have profit. You usually can find those products for pe pennies. And when I say pennies, you can find, you know, you could create a bundle and be under $2.50 and sell it for 25. You know, I just seem to have a lot of success in that aisle. So, or in that, in that listing score.
sewing. Do it yourself. I guess sewing and all these things would be the same thing. What do we got here? Ryan's World, we got some puzzles. So these puzzles definitely did really well. Thousand piece um, cereal puzzles. And there is a few. And there's Pepsi. So I definitely got to scan these. These are new. Or they're back. My, I, although I hate puzzles, I'm not a puzzle guy. And I'm not, not, not talking about doing them, but I'm talking about selling them. I've, I've tried in the past. There's a few that have success. And I want to say that cereal one is one of them. So, got to definitely come back. If you were on live right now, head over to your Dollarama. Let's check that out. Let's see. I'll turn on my scanner. I'm going to pause this video right now. I'm going to scan the product and I'll tell you if there's any value in that. So, all right, I'm back. Hopefully I didn't lose you guys. Thanks for hanging out. So, here's the scoop. I'll give you the scoop right now. This one here has no ranking and sells for $30. And it's not a barcode scan, but it's an image scan. This one here has 130,000 ranking in toys, sells for $30. So, lasting crispiness. Oh, these are all the Rice Krispies. Oh, that's hilarious. I did not check the re the the re so when a when a product is ranked like high like over 50,000 100,000 especially you want to check the reviews because rank doesn't account I always you know, I'll use this I just got to make a t-shirt from it but rank doesn't account for rare so if there's not a lot of those out there obviously the rank's going to plummet it's only going to sell when one or two sell and it's going to keep the list the keep a rank but it's not going to be a high rank or a quality rank if uh if the product is rare and the way to check that the product is good so to to verify maybe your buys is just to check the reviews and if there are hundreds of reviews four or five star reviews then you know the product's in demand and you know people want it and that would be a good way to um, to validate you buying some inventory for a product that is high rank. So hold that thought. I'm gonna check the reviews on that product and see. All right, I'm back. Let's see if we're live here. Okay, I'm back. We're live. So here's the deal which is unique. I didn't realize it. Got to look a little closer. But there are four versions of this puzzle. Frosted Flakes. Rice Krispies. This is like Corn Flakes or something. Yeah, this is an old version of Corn flakes mainly with some Rice Krispies on there, but really old cereal. So there are Rice Krispies, corn flakes, there are Frosted Flakes, and then there's like one other one. I can't remember where it is. Oh, yeah, the Pepsi one. But um, there's it's 130,000 rank, but there was no reviews on two of them and then the frost flakes had nine reviews averaging four and a half stars which right there tells me is not worth investing in because there is there has to be at least if if the product is over a hundred thousand you want to make sure there is at least a hundred reviews if not two or three hundred i mean if there's two or three hundred four and four or five star reviews then uh, it's worth buying if even if the product is hundred and twenty thousand rank because you know there's demand You know people like it Ooh, there's a Disney Ooh, there's a Disney frozen toy here, but you know there's demand uh, When there's lots of reviews when there's only nine 
people aren't buying it, they're not leaving reviews, and the rank tells you about that. What's going on, Respawn? Good to see you on here. Got another product here called In My Room Bright Dancing Snowflake Lights. That's kind of cool. That is very, very cool. I don't know if there's any rank on something like this. Package is a little bit big. Okay, hang tight, don't go anywhere. I'm gonna flip over to my scanner and just quickly scan that product. And I'm gonna scan the Porg and Piglets and see if there's any price on that yet. Meaning, I will, I'll tell you in a sec, hold on. Am I back? Come on. All right, I'm back. Let me know if this sound works. I tried this before when I was at Canadian Tire flipping back and forth, and I think I lost sound. So comment below. Let me know if I have, if you guys can still hear me. Sourcing has been good. I, I've been taking a break off doing retail arbitrage. I, I spent a lot of time, actually spent about 15,000 in the last month and a half just re-inventorying on some private label products and launching a new product respawn place. But uh, first time I've been in a Dollarama in a while, just scanning with my eyes and seeing what's out here and seeing what's available. A couple finds, a couple things I want to check out. Nothing huge so far. Um, plus I don't do Dollaramas, like I said in my last video. I don't really hit up the Dollarama all that much. But you might as well, every time I'm in a store, I might as well might as well give you guys some uh, entertainment. Hope you guys enjoy it. Um, so, this is actually a good example of what I was talking about with the puzzles over there. The snowflake dance is, uh, let's see what it is. I believe it was 100,000 rank. Let me just quickly check. Snowflake. Okay, the snowflake dance, the snowflake light dance has no rank. No rank at all, but it has 90 four and a half star reviews. 90, which is actually pretty decent. It's close to usually what I gauge. So if it doesn't have a rank, it could be rare. It just might not be on Amazon or there might be a limited amount. Uh, the fact that it has 90 reviews I may go and buy six of those. It's selling for 20 bucks, so it doesn't, I mean, that 20 bucks is probably gonna only be six, seven dollars profit, but I would recommend it to a seller, a new seller especially, to buy five or six of those. Because one, you probably won't have much competition. Even though I didn't look at it specific to that listing, I didn't, I didn't really deep dive into how many competition there is. When other sellers are scanning that, they're gonna see that it's no rank and they're just gonna walk away. They're not gonna really look at reviews. The fact that it has reviews probably doesn't mean, and the fact that it doesn't have any rank means there isn't any sellers, probably. The fact that it has reviews means people are buying it and enough people are buying it. I don't even know what the scale is, but I think it's one in every 20 or 25 people leave a review. So times that by 25. You know, that's 2,500 people bought that product on Amazon for it to get 90 reviews. You know, that could very well mean that it just doesn't, there's not many people out there who have some inventory on that. But if you're looking to sell a product, you're starting on Amazon, that'd be a good buy. The other one is this Piglet. So this Piglet has a 98,000 rank. It sells for $15.99 and it only has one review. So the problem with that is I wouldn't buy it first off because there's no profit at 16 bucks. You're not going to make any money. You make like two bucks, not worth it. Walk away right there. Second thing is it only has one review. That's just means it's not selling. It's not selling enough. There's not enough demand for one review. So, uh, last thing before I head out is always check the book section. When you are at Dollarama crazy thing about Dollarama is they do the comics. They do the comic section here. And they have, usually they, they, you can score some good ones. Like, check out this one. It's called Robin, the Son of Batman. 
It's got full wrapped. DC Comics don't do as well as the Marvel Comics here, but they do have Marvel Comics as well. But it's fully wrapped, brand new. Probably sells like it's $22.99 US, $27.99 Canadian. And I don't know what this would scan at, but this is Volume 1, Year of the Blood. So it's a good edition. Might do well. We got some other ones here by DC. Superman. More Superman. Green Lantern. Batman. DC Comics do okay. They're not, they're not as popular as... Like I said, they're not as popular as Marvel. But Dollarama have Marvel Comics too. If you, you're able to hit enough of these places up. And the great thing with the comics is that... Um, there, some of these, some of these are selling for fifty dollars. You get them for four bucks. Some of them are, are selling for fifty, fifty dollars online. Thirty, forty, fifty dollars online. You just gotta like I, I one time was a, I struck gold. They don't have many more, but I, I hit a dollarama and let me know. Let, you guys can let me know if you struck gold as well. I on this find, I hit a dollarama and I found. I think it was four or five, maybe more than that, seven or eight different editions of Star Wars comics that were selling between thirty and sixty dollars a comic, and they sold out. They I couldn't keep them in stock, and I I think I did a fifteen store run in a day just to get my hands on every Star Wars comic I could possibly get my hands on, and I kept the series for myself. But that was huge. I, th I swear I got at least 100 Star Wars comics. Don't have any in stock. That was last year. Um, so, you know, you, you find I can give you countless examples of that in the book section here. But uh, there's these Star Wars Rebel books. I haven't checked those, but I, I don't know if those would be as good. They got other books here, like women's books and stuff like that. And. All these are usually in new condition. Sometimes they have uh, the marks on them. I'll let you decide how you want to sell those. Uh, I've sold books with the... Uh, I don't know what those marks are called. I forget. But I've sold them as new before in the past. You're not supposed to, but I have. Um, again, I kind of look at the description and, and I look at the consumer at the end of the day. Are they buying this to collect it or are they buying this to read it? So, but I don't, as my wife is calling me on the other line, I got to get out of here. Coach Respect, the wise guy, hit me up in the comment section below. Make this video blow up. Let me know what's going on in your life with your product research. And I will see you guys in the next video.